This is Cynthia Colbert. I'm the president and CEO of Catholic Charities. We are co-sponsoring this uh, webinar with the Archdiocese of Galveston, Houston, with the Houston Volunteer Lawyers, and the Society of St. Vincent de Paul. We know that during this time of COVID that many people have lost jobs or had their hours reduced. Certainly with other expenses and a family, paying rent is uppermost in people's minds. So we thought this webinar would be useful to talk about tenant, right, tenant rights. Uh, before I introduce um, Sister Maureen from the Archdiocese of Galveston, Houston, I'd like to share this prayer with you. So we'll begin as we try to live our lives in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Father, we thank you that Jesus came to break down barriers. He did not see the migrant or the settled, the housed or the homeless, the unemployed or the unemployed. He saw and loved each person. So forgive us when we put up barriers between ourselves and between others. Help us to show love to everyone without constraint. We pray today for individuals and families who are challenged because they've been unable to pay their rent. We pray for decision makers, for service providers, and for leadership in our community that we can work together to find solutions and that funding will be secured to help keep people housed empowers us all to work for justice and peace through our words and through our deeds and through the political means that we have. Give us open hearts to serve our brothers and sisters who are at risk of homelessness. Be with us this evening as we discuss important topics that inform people of their rights as tenants. In Christ's name we pray, amen. amen. Well, it's my pleasure now to introduce Sister Maureen O'Connell. She is the Archdiocesan Secretariat for Social Concerns, and she'll take the next part of our agenda. Sister Maureen? Thank you, Cynthia. Well, as Cynthia said that, you know, so many of these agencies were, that provide for community members in need, early on we recognized that COVID-19 was gonna take a serious toll on individuals and families in our community. Although we recognize that there really are many areas of need, we felt important at this time to focus on the struggles many are experiencing regarding housing. Some estimates suggested that 40% of our community could face housing loss as a result of COVID-19. Sadly, those, those estimates are becoming a reality. Before I introduce our presenters, I'd like to make two very important points. Number one, let's be perfectly clear that this is not a legal workshop but rather an opportunity to learn about resources and how one might navigate systems if they're unable to pay rent or already owe back rent. And second, and even more important than that, is to just that all information presented this evening is gonna be available on the Catholic Charities website. So you don't need to worry about getting a piece of paper and a pencil and writing down everything that you hear that all of these things will be available on the website and that we'll be showing the, the link to the website at the end of the evening. So again, sit back, relax, and really just take in the information that, that our presenters are going to provide this evening. We've divided the evening into to three segment, segments. We're gonna begin with Larry Lebanowski, who's a lawyer in private practice here in Houston. And with Mary Carmen Doler, who is a staff attorney with the Houston Volunteer Lawyers. They'll be discussing the eviction process, tenant rights, resources, and how to communicate or negotiate with a landlord. After Larry and, and Mary Carmen's presentation, Maria Miller, Maria Mitchell, who is the managing attorney at the St. Francis Cabrini Center for Immigrant Legal Services here at Catholic Charities, she'll give us some tools for overcoming the challenges. Then Mary Carmen and, and Larry will respond with some frequently asked questions. And then if time permits, we'll be able to take some questions if you want to present your question in the chat room. So again, remember uh, just a quick reminder that all of this information is going to be available online at catholiccharities.org. And that we'll be giving the link to that and to all of the other resources at the end of the presentation. So Larry and Mary Carmen, good evening and welcome. Thank you so much, sister. Uh, it's such a pleasure to be here. My name is Larry Lebanowski. 
and I am the acting general counsel of Catholic Charities uh, of the Archdiocese of Galveston, Houston. Um, we're, we're here uh, tonight because we know a lot of folks are really having a hard time because of the COVID uh, pandemic and that they're having trouble paying their rent. And our goal uh, is to try to present as much information as we can uh, that would enable you to be confident, understand your rights, know what you can and can't do, and most importantly, uh, to give you some resources uh, that we hope might be able to help you. Um, my my co-host is uh, Mari Carmen Dollar, and I'd like to uh, give her an opportunity to say hello and introduce herself. Hi, thank you, Larry. Um, my name is Mari Carmen Dollar. I'm a staff attorney at Houston Volunteer Lawyers. Um, Houston Volunteer Lawyers is an organization that provides free legal services for individuals who qualify and also promotes volunteerism among the Houston Bar Association attorneys. Um, we look for volunteer attorneys for individuals. Um, and if we don't find an, if, if we don't, if it's not an issue that requires a volunteer attorney, we try to provide pro se resources and tools where individuals can represent themselves. We provide our services through um, legal clinics. They used to be in person prior to COVID-19, but now we've got several different types of online clinics. Um, you can find one at least once a week um, currently where people can sit down and discuss their legal issue with a volunteer attorney, and then we'll determine if um, somebody requires additional services and may be eligible for volunteer attorney. For the last two years, I've worked with Hurricane um, Harvey disaster affected clients on disaster issues. And this year I am working on, um, I'm currently working on eviction cases um, and anything related to COVID-19 among other things. So we're very happy to be here and share our resources and information to you um, in this learning um, webinar and we welcome any questions that uh, may come up during our presentation. Larry? Okay, thank you, Mary Carmen. Okay, well, uh, our time uh, is, uh, is passing and we've got quite a bit to cover, so let me, let me begin by uh, giving you a very brief outline of what we hope to cover tonight. And there was a, a very important development that occurred last week where the uh, Centers for Disease Control issued an order, um, which is, uh, which is intended to uh, and is expected to suspend evictions until December 31st, 2020. We're going to talk about that. Uh, we've moved that up. That's been a, a brand new development that we're, that we're moving up. And so, um, uh, but we're also going to talk about the types of leases there are, what law applies, uh, the steps in the eviction process, we feel that's important to talk about uh, because later on in the program, we're going to talk about a couple of ideas on how you might be able to avoid eviction. And so it's important for you to know about the leases and the application of the law. So we're going to touch on that. Then we're going to talk about the steps in the, in the eviction process, uh, the, the eviction trial, which takes place in Justice of the Peace Court, and the appeal, if necessary or possible, uh, how an eviction can affect you. Um, we're going to talk, as I said, about encouraging folks to try to avoid eviction if they can by perhaps trying to work with their landlord and what the negative consequences are uh, of getting an eviction. And then we're going to finish up with talking about the available resources that exist and uh, that's gonna be a very, very important part of the uh, presentation. And Maria Mitchell uh, is going to uh, talk about those resources. And those are the things that, that will help you not only to know what the process involves, but perhaps to see what resources are out there that might be able to help you uh, financially, perhaps, or legally uh, to try to avoid uh, being evicted. So let's, let's get right into it. And uh, if, if we could, let's, let's start out with talking about this CDC order that came out last week. Uh, Mari Carmen, if you can, uh, could you speak a little bit about what that eviction suspension order is all about and how it works? Yes, so the CDC eviction moratorium 
came out um, very much as a surprise to at least all the legal aid attorneys um, that are working on evictions. Um, it was there was it came out on Tuesday of last week, I believe, and it took effect last Friday, September 4th. Um, it was, it's an order that requires an individual to present a declaration to their landlord. The declaration um, covers several things. There are two, four, six, seven items on the declaration that you as a tenant must be able to truthfully attest to. Um, and I'm gonna go over each one of those and then we'll go over um, what the eviction moratorium, well, let me start out with what the eviction moratorium does for you. Um, it prohibits a landlord from giving you a notice to vacate. It prohibits a landlord from filing an eviction and it prohibits a landlord from enforcing any eviction that the court has already decided, including issuing a writ of possession. So basically the um, CDC eviction moratorium um, will stop an eviction anywhere in the process from beginning to end. Um, it will last until December 31st of this year. It went into effect on Friday, September 4th. So for those reasons, um, well, since it went effect on, into effect on Friday, it's very new. We are expecting some legal challenges to it, but so far there's been nothing. Um, and so we are encouraging individuals to take advantage of it. Um, does it protect against all eviction proceedings? No, this order only protects against non-payment of rent cases. Um, if you do something to break your lease agreement, such as you have a pet that you didn't um, put on the lease or you're making too much noise, some other issue that's related to um, your lease agreement, you can still be evicted for those issues. It's non-payment of rent um, that this will affect. Um, if you do, this does not mean you don't owe rent during the time of the moratorium. Um, the rent is still gonna be owed and unfortunately at the end of December, December 31st, all of the rent that hasn't been paid um, will be owed at that time. And if there are late fees and penalties that have accrued, those will be owed as well. So we're going to go over the declaration. Um, this tells us who is covered and what steps you need to take. So I'm going to read each of these items on here um, and you'll be able to look at all of these documents when we get to our resources. These resources, my understanding is they're available on catholiccharities.org slash tenants. And um, you will find a copy of the declaration. It has already been printed and it is in English, Vietnamese, and Spanish. So the most important thing to know about the declaration is that you are certifying under penalty of perjury that the information in the declaration is true um, and that you understand that false or misleading statements or omissions may result in criminal and civil actions for fines, penalties, damages, or imprisonment. This is on the declaration and I don't want that to scare anyone. In short, it really just means that you are telling the truth to the court. So we wanna be real careful and make sure that everybody understands that, um, that you qualify for each of these items that are listed on here. And if you have any questions, reach out to um, Catholic Charities, Houston Volunteer Lawyers, or any other legal aid organization if you'd like to discuss it. Um, the first requirement is that you have used your best efforts to obtain governmental assistance for rent or housing. So basically you've gone out and you've tried to get rental assistance. And that includes the Baker Ripley program that the city of Houston has going on. Um, the next requirement is that you, um, it's one of these three, you fit into one of these three categories. You earn, you expect to earn less than $99,000 in 2020. Um, number two is, you are not required to report any income in 2019, or number three, that you received a stimulus check or economic impact payment um, under the CARES Act. So one of those three categories is what you must fall into. Larry, do you have any questions for me so far? 
Um, I really don't, but except I wanted to just emphasize what you said, and so we might be able to speed through this a little bit quicker by emphasizing that that declaration that you're talking about is on our website in the Catholic Charities backslash tenant uh, link. And if you go there, there's just those, as you said, Monte Carmen, those seven bullets. You've got to make sure that you qualify. I think you've, you've really hit the high spots on it. You've got to have a certain amount. You've got to be under a certain amount of earnings. And you have to be really careful that you, everything you say that you swear to, because you're swearing to this statement, you have to make sure that it's accurate. But no, I, I, I don't have any questions at this point. I think, I think what you're uh, saying is uh, so far has been great. Okay, and I'll just go through the next uh, points very quickly because as Larry said, you can look at the declaration, but I want everyone to know what's in it. Um, I'm unable to pay my full rent or make a full housing payment due to substantial loss of household income, loss of compensable work hours or wages, layoffs or extraordinary medical expenses. So um, we know that, that, that lots of people fall into all of those categories. Um, the fourth requirement is I'm using my best efforts to make timely partial payments that are as close to full payment as the individual circumstances may permit, so that you have tried to make payments or you are trying to make payments. The fifth requirement is if you were evicted, you would likely be homeless, need to move into a homeless shelter, or need to move into a residence shared by other people. So basically you would have to live in close quarters with somebody else. The sixth requirement is that you understand that you must still pay rent or make a housing payment and comply with other um, requirements under your lease agreement. The last requirement is that you understand that this is a temporary halt in evictions um, until December 31st, 2020 and that full payment for all rent due um, will be due at the end um, of the moratorium. So that basically covers the requirements, but we would encourage every person facing eviction to look at the declaration and see if it applies to you and whether you can truthfully sign that. This is really important. The next step is that you have to give it to your landlord. That is the requirement that the declaration be signed by you and provided to your landlord. Um, when you're doing this, we suggest providing a copy in a way that you can show the court that you provided it. So that would be email, fax, um, certified mail where they send you a little green card that shows who signed for it. Or if you don't have any of those options, take somebody with you when you deliver it to the landlord who might be able to testify on your behalf that you provided to it to the landlord and they accepted it. It's very important that you, um, that you do that because the court is gonna wanna know whether the landlord received it or not. The other thing is, and people just don't always remember, keep a copy for yourself because you may need to take it to court with you, okay? So one of the things that I do wanna point out about this is it does not mean you don't have to go to court. One of the things that we have to do is still show up in court um, if it's already at a point where there's a trial that's scheduled um, because the, the court can ask about the declaration um, and you need to make sure that the court is aware that you delivered it. And hopefully at that point, um, the case will be abated as required by the moratorium. Larry, okay. you want to talk about the eviction process? Yes, yes, um, I do. And before we leave this, let me just quickly say, I'm, I'm glad we're spending time on this because this is the most important development and the most important thing that any of you can take out of this webinar, in my opinion, because this actually enables you to possibly stay in your rental unit until December 31st. It, uh, as Monte Carmen pointed out, it's not going to be free. You're not going to, uh, you know, you'll, uh, you'll ultimately be responsible for the rent during this period. So that'll be something that we'll want to talk about later when you're negotiating and talking with your, with your landlord. But I also wanted to point out that it's very, very important that you comply with all other provisions of your lease. Because if, for example, if you do something you're not supposed to be doing and the landlord has another reason why he can terminate your your, your lease, 
then he will. And that is not protected by this order. So those are two very important things. And I can't emphasize enough that you should go to the resources that are on this website and look at the information that's there and go to, go to that Houston Volunteer Lawyer Organization that Muddy Carmen works for because it's a fantastic organization with people who really know this stuff inside and out. And they can help you and give you information. So let's move on to the next part, which is the basics. There are two different general types of leases. There's a, an oral lease and there's a written lease. Most people have written leases. You should get your lease if you don't have a copy of it, and you should make sure you understand all the provisions of that lease. It's very, very important to do that so that you don't run afoul, you don't violate some provision that will enable you to be evicted for something other than not being able to pay your rent. Uh, Monte Carmen, can you talk very briefly about the application of the property code to leases and how it works? Uh, yes, so the Texas Property Code is what governs your lease, and so many leases are standard leases that the state of Texas um, apartments associations use. Um, so generally, most of those leases will be in line with the Property Code. Um, the Property Code is what explains the law surrounding the lease and how violations of the lease can be addressed between landlords and tenants. Um, if you have a lease that is um, provided by maybe an individual, sometimes those leases will vary a little bit. Okay, great. Now, um, as, as Sister Maureen said in the beginning, we, we can't give you legal advice in this webinar, but we can give you suggestions and ideas. And one of the suggestions uh, that we want to give you is, is going to come later, and that's where we encourage you to talk to your landlord and see if you can work out something with your landlord. And we'll talk about that more later. But a lot of folks are afraid to talk to their landlord because they're afraid that if the landlord, if you go to the landlord and say, I can't pay my rent, he's immediately going to kick you out of your rental unit. Legally, he's not allowed to do that. And that's why we wanna talk very quickly about the steps in the eviction process. The first step in the eviction process is that you have to be given a notice of, of, of to vacate. And if you don't, if you have a written lease that provides a certain number of days that you have to get out, then the landlord has to give you that number of days. But in the absence, and it could be less than what the property code uh, mandates, which is three days. So if your lease doesn't say anything about the number of days you have to leave, uh, then it's the default is three days. So the first thing the landlord has to do is provide you with a written notice to vacate, giving you those, that amount of time. That's why I said earlier, get a copy of your lease and see if there's a shorter period. But he has to deliver that to you or hang it on your door. He can't do anything until he does that. So right off the bat, you know, you don't have to be fearful that if you go to your landlord and tell him quite honestly, you're having trouble financially, he can't just put you out of your apartment. At least he can't do it legally. Now, after the three days or whatever number of days you're given expires, then you go to the next uh, part of the process, which is that you're, uh, the landlord can sue you in eviction court, which is the justice of the peace court. And I'd like, if I could, to ask Monty Carmen, because this is one of her areas of expertise, to talk a little bit about how that process works. Okay, so th that is the process of the eviction trial. Um, and it is in front of the justice of the peace. You do not need to have an attorney to represent yourself in an eviction trial. And the landlord does not have to have an attorney individuals can represent themselves. Um, and a lot of times the landlords will actually have other representatives there on their behalf um, who are not attorneys. Um, you will present yourself at trial right now. Most of these are happening virtually through Zoom. Um, sometimes they're also telephonically just over the telephone. Um, and in most cases, you can still appear in person if you'd like to do that. The judge will ask the landlord um, to state their case, basically um, say why they're there. And then the judge will go to the tenant and ask the tenant 
to explain their position. Um, in a case where you filed a CDC declaration, that would be the time where you'd say, um, Your Honor, I have filed this declaration and I gave it to the landlord. Um, in other cases, the, the judge may start asking questions um, about the, the situation and what caused the landlord and the tenant to be there. And then with a few minute, within a few minutes um, should render their judgment. There are also times when the judge may think it would be beneficial for you and the landlord to talk about maybe reaching a resolution that does not um, result in an eviction, which could be a payment plan or a little bit more time, something like that. Um, but generally, anytime you go to court, you just need to be aware of the end result can, can be an eviction judgment. Okay, thank you. And, and let me emphasize one thing, if I could, or a couple of things. First of all, when you're notified of your eviction proceeding and the trial is set, which is usually something out 10 days, maybe a little longer, it's very important to actually show up even if you don't think that you're going to win. And in all likelihood, the bad news is if you haven't paid your rent, you're probably not going to win. But it's still very important to show up, dress neatly and be polite to everyone there. So we want to encourage you to do that. Now the judge is Larry, going to- Let me interrupt you real quick. Sure. In, in addition to what you just said, we don't want people not showing up because they think they're not going to win. There are certain things that can be pointed out that could possibly um, end up giving you more time. Um, and that's why we encourage you to seek some kind of um, legal information and legal advice. Um, on our website at Houston Volunteer Lawyers, there's a volunteer guide and it gives you questions to ask and to be prepared for. But as Larry said, we always want you to show up in court because we don't want you just pack up and leave. There is a process and we want to make sure that the landlords are following the process. And the process doesn't mean that you leave, you need to leave as soon as you get that eviction or that notice to vacate on your door. Yes, that's great. And, and, and I appreciate you saying that. And uh, yeah, I was encouraging you to show up for sure. Definitely show up, definitely make the go through the process and, and go through those steps. Now, the judge, if he rules against you, he's going to rule one way or the other. And if he rules against you, you're going to have five days to appeal. We don't want to spend a lot of time since our time is very short now and we want to move on to some other things. You do have a right to appeal. Um, the, the unfortunate thing is, is that in order, in order for you to remain in your rental unit during the period of the appeal, you're going to have to pay your rent. And so the chances are that if you couldn't pay your rent and that's why you're in this eviction problem, you're not going to be able to pay them during the appeal process. I'll let Monty Carmen talk just for a minute or so about that if, if, if she could. Yes. Um, so like you said, um, paying rent into the registry of the court is one of the requirements for an appeal. Um, and that just allows you to stay in the property. The landlord, as long as you've paid that rent, the landlord cannot um, ask for a writ of execution or writ of possession for the property. Um, if you don't pay that rent, they can ask for the writ of possession and ask you to leave the property, but your appeal would still go forward. You just can't stay in the property during that time. If you won the appeal, then you could move back into it. Um, but that's why they require you to pay the rent into the registry of the court for your appeal. Um, okay, so we, we emphasized the CDC order and the steps you're going to, if, if, you, if you'd like to, you're going to go and check the website, look at the certification that you have to swear to, see if you qualify. But one of the other things we wanted to mention in this webinar is that you should go to your landlord, be confident, go to your landlord, tell your landlord whatever your situation is, and see if your landlord is negotiable with you. Um, you've, you've, if, if you can't pay anything, you can't pay anything. But a landlord probably wants to hear from you 
and this and it's going to it's going to vary from case to case you know we realize that but we do want to encourage you that if you can try to avoid uh being evicted um that's the best way to go because being evicted has a lot of very bad consequences to your credit to your ability to find uh, other, uh, you know, other rental units. So it's, it's very important for you to, if you can, to try to avoid that. Um, and of course, um, you know, there, there's going to be a chance later in the seminar and you'll have a chance when you go to the website to go ahead and look at the different, uh, resources that are available, the links, some of which could provide you with some financial assistance if you qualify. Certainly the most, one of the most important things is to call on the, the legal services that are in these resource links to see if you can call up and get a lawyer on the phone who can talk to you and answer your questions. Certainly, we're trying to tell you what we can, but we, for all I know, we're raising more questions than we're, than we're answering. So if you can get one-on-one -on -one with a volunteer lawyer uh, and uh, and talk to them about about what your situation is. They may be able to give you some good ideas, help you, and help you to to uh, avoid making a misstep. Um, Monty Carmen, do you have anything you'd like to add to that? You know, I think I I want to correct something I said. I believe I said we have a volunteer guide on our website. It's a tenant pro se guide for representing yourself in an eviction. And so it gives you instructions and forms to use. Um, so at the very least, um, you want to try and get a hold of that. Um, Texas Law Help is also a good place to go. TexasLawHelp.org is a good pro se um, website. But you want to educate yourself as much as possible um, before you head to court. Um, and if possible, contact a legal aid organization to assist you. Um, but yes, you need to approach your landlord um, and see if there is anything that you can work out. And unfortunately, a lot of times there is not, and that's why this CDC moratorium is um, the first step you want to take. Um, but it's always helpful to try and work something out with your landlord, um, to reach out to the different organizations that are providing rental assistance. Um, and that includes many of the community organizations throughout Houston, in addition to the city of Houston through Baker Ripley. And one of the things I wanna mention, and I'm not sure if it's gonna be mentioned here, but the Baker Ripley program was supposed to end on August 30th, and they have continued it. It is now going to continue, um, and your landlord does not have to be a part of the program to participate in it, which is, was one of the previous requirements. So there's just a couple of changes that have come down at the same time that the CDC moratorium um, has, has come out. So I want people to be aware of that. Okay, thank you so much. We, we've, we've about run out of, uh, of our time. Let me just say just a couple of quick things to conclude and then Muddy Carmen and I will come back later to, ask, to answer some frequently asked questions which will review some of what we've talked about. There, there are, if you go to the Houston Volunteer Lawyers website, there's a, there's a really, really great uh, uh, um, presentation that's made on there uh, where they go through all the steps. So anything that uh, that we've missed or haven't given you enough information on as regards the process itself, you can find there. Um, in closing, uh, you know, I'd like to just say that this CDC order suspending the evictions can buy you some time if you qualify. And so we want to urge you to go to, the, to go to the Catholic Charities website, look at that certification, see if you qualify. And if you do, go forward with the steps that will buy you some time and then be thinking about what you're going to do when the moratorium, when the, when the suspension is off and your landlord is then free again to, uh, to evict you. So um, we wish you a lot of luck and hope you got something out of this part of it. We'll, we'll come back in a few minutes, but I want to turn it back over to Sister Maureen and apologize for running over, Sister. Thanks very much. Larry and Mary Carmen, thank you both. I mean, this is so much good information. And I know it's easy to be overwhelmed. Um, so I, I think that, that, again, the information is there. The information is going to be up on the website when, when this is over. But right now, I'd like to turn it over to Maria Mitchell.
Maria, as I said earlier, is the managing attorney of the St. Francis Cabrini um, Center for Immigrant uh, Legal Services at Catholic Charities. And Maria is hopefully going to give us some resources about what to do. You know, how do we how do we move forward with this kind of a process and what are the, the services that are available to us? So rather than take time talking about it, Maria, if you would like to pick up where we left off. Yes, thank you, sister. Um, so in addition to the information that Larry and Mari Carmen just provided, uh, we have available on the website links with resources for um, financial assistance, rental assistance uh, via Baker Ripley. And as Mari Carmen mentioned, uh, there is no end uh, deadline anymore uh, that has been extended. Um, we also have a, a slide uh, information and a link Perhaps the most useful site is the 211 number, whether you can call 211 or go on the website at 211texas.org. That site has a lot of information about uh, where you can find assistance closer to you. So they usually will ask you for your zip code. And that way, you know, Houston being so large, you don't have to travel very far. Financial assistance can also be provided through the Alliance of Community Assistance Ministries. Of course, Catholic Charities has a program. Uh, the link is on our website. And the Society of St. Vincent de Paul can also help financially and with some other basic needs. Um, there's also a link with information about uh, unemployment benefits uh, by the Texas Workforce Commission on Employment and Benefit Services. And a very important link to frequently ask questions about unemployment insurance benefits. Perhaps the one that stands out to me is a reminder that Unemployment benefits are taxable. So when it comes January, we're gonna to have to think about those again. So it's probably important to, as uh, you access these benefits, very important benefits, just keep in mind that um, those benefits are taxable and we'll need to pay some taxes in the end. Um, there's also information about COVID-19 uh, from the city of Houston and the county, Harris County, um, and also for Ben County as well and um, places where you can find um, free testing, rapid testing closer to you. Uh, very important and a huge concern for all of us at this time. These are extremely difficult times for many people. Uh, Catholic Charities has uh, assistance with counseling and behavioral health. Our uh, social pages, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter have also access to some uh, videos that are extremely helpful to help us navigate the stressors that um, we're going through because of the pandemic, uh, the financial, the food insecurity, not knowing what's going to happen. Uh, so I encourage you to access the website on the social media as well. Uh, and of course, we also have information on how to contact the National Suicide Prevention Hotline. Uh, reach out for help. You're not alone. We're all probably cooked up somewhere, but there's a lot of information and a lot of uh, help available for everyone. So those, all those links are available on our website. Keep them handy, bookmark them on your browser or on your phone so that in case, whether you need it or somebody that you know needs it has access to them and reach out to us to help, for help. So. Thank you so much, Maria. I, again, I think it's easy to um, to feel overwhelmed, and so the resources that that Maria just shared, and they're again, they're going to be on the website. And if you'll notice, if you notice it on all of those slides at the top, there was a yellow box, and that yellow box has the link to the Catholic Charities website. So again, none of us are alone in this, and I think that the the critical thing that we need to remember is that in spite of all the chaos that surrounds us, that we are all connected one way or another. And to encourage those connections, whether it's through the website or going to somebody or if you need uh, legal assistance to the volunteer lawyers. So end of my lecture. Back to Larry and, and Mary Carmen. And if you'll just pick up some of those pre ask questions that people so often have and don't get a chance to ask. Yes, great. Thank you, Sister Maureen. Um, 
why don't we go over some of these questions? Um, Monte Carmen, let me, let me ask you uh, a question that's, that's been asked. If I don't have a written lease, does that mean that I don't owe rent? And can my landlord immediately evict me? You, excuse me. Um, you still owe rent. Um, and yes, your landlord can evict you lawfully under the rule set forth in the Texas Property Code that we talked about earlier. Um, it doesn't matter if your re lease is written or if it's what we call month to month or oral. All right. So, um, Larry, let me ask you a question. Um, if I haven't been able to pay my rent, can my landlord lock me out of the rental unit? Okay, the answer to that question is yes, he can, but only on a very limited basis. He has to do it according to the rules of the Texas Property Code, and that he's allowed to lock you out for a very short period of time. It's designed to get your attention so that he can ask you, where's my rent? but he has to let you back in uh, within a few hours of your contacting him. Um, okay, Monte Carmen, here's another one for you. Uh, if I haven't been able to pay my rent, can my landlord shut off my utilities? Uh, no, they cannot legally shut off your utilities. Um, and one of the things that I'll add for both those questions, the utilities and the lockouts, is there's a certain type of legal procedure that you have to go through um, in order to address those concerns if they do happen. And uh, we would suggest that you contact a legal aid organization to give you some information to do it on your own or to assist you with legal advice in that situation. Um, so Larry, what types of things can cause me to be evicted? Can you give me a, a list? Okay. We, we've been focused almost exclusively uh, and purposely on being evicted for failure to pay your rent. That's going to be the primary thing that we're concerned about. But of course, if you have a written lease, you can get evicted for violating any provision of a lease. If it says no pets and you have a dog, or if it says you can't have more than five people or four people in the unit and you have an extra person, you could be evicted for any of those things. And it is very, very important, particularly in light of the CDC eviction moratorium that we've spent a lot of time talking about in this webinar, that you comply very carefully with all the provisions of your lease because you wouldn't want to be in a situation where you can't pay your rent and you get evicted because you violated some other provision, perhaps a provision that you didn't even know about because you hadn't paid very much attention. I'll admit, I've, I've signed leases in my, in my day. I typically sign them and a lot of times I don't pay very much attention to them. And, uh, and I've never had a problem, but these are, these are very different times. And so that's why it's very important to read your lease and know what you're obligated to do. Um, okay, let me ask you one, Muddy Carmen. Um, are there any special rules in Harris County that protect me from, from being evicted? Uh, no, there are no special rules in Harris County, although some other counties may have some um, that provide protections. Um, but right now we have the CDC eviction moratorium and that is gonna be the best protection at this time. Larry, can you um, tell us if my landlord sued me and the trial is on a day that I, it's not convenient for me to go, um, can I skip the trial? Uh, the answer is yes, you can skip the trial, but you should not skip the trial. And this gives me a chance to revisit what we talked about earlier. It is so, so important for you to go to that trial and look good and be polite and be calm, even though you may be under a lot of stress. Go there and exercise your rights. It could be that your landlord may not have followed the rules. It could be that you have qualified for the eviction, the CDC eviction moratorium that we've talked about, and the landlord has evicted you anyway. You would want to go to that trial and you would want to explain to the court. And Monte Carmen earlier talked about the importance of being able to prove that you, get, that you handed your landlord that certification. 
this would be a time when it would be very important to be able to prove that. So if you brought a friend with you, or if you sent it by email and you can prove it, very important to be able to prove it. Larry, so can you, you explain what would happen if you didn't go to trial? Very simple. If you don't show up for trial, you get a default. The judge doesn't think you care enough to be there. He will rule against you automatically, and you will be, you will be done with. So that's why it's very important to go. Um, Money Carmen, let me go ahead and ask you another one. Um, I've been served with a lawsuit for eviction, injustice of the peace court. Do I need to hire a lawyer? No, in justice of the peace court, you don't need a lawyer. You can represent yourself just as a landlord can represent themselves. But um, like I said earlier, we'd love to give you some legal information. And in some cases we can provide legal advice or legal counsel. So we always advise that you um, seek services of one of the legal aid organizations in Houston, including Houston Volunteer Lawyers. Um, we all have a wealth of information available on our websites, and there are a lot of other websites where you can get a lot of information, and we can point you to all that information. We don't want you going through the eviction process uh, without any information. We want you armed with everything you need to know. Um, Larry, my landlord has not made repairs and has treated me very badly during the last year. Can I bring a suit or bring counterclaims against him in my eviction case? The short answer to that question is no, you cannot. There are no counter suits that you can bring in JP court. Uh, and you also cannot withhold rent uh, because your landlord has failed to make repairs. That's not going to unfortunately be uh, a reason for you not to be evicted. Um, Okay, Marty Carmen, uh, my eviction trial was held and I didn't make it down there. I've just found out that I lost. What do I do now? That's where the appeal comes in, um, but hopefully you found out right away because you only have five days to appeal that judgment. So you can file your appeal and then the case goes up to the um, county court and it's a trial, what we call a trial de novo, which means it's like a brand new trial. So it's your, your second chance to present your case. Larry, um, can you tell us if I still owe rent during the time I'm involved in this lawsuit for the eviction? Yes, you do. Uh, you, the rent continues to accrue as do penalties, interest, et cetera. So while you may whether it's this moratorium that you're taking advantage of, will buy you some time, but the liability will continue to, to accrue. So that's why we're encouraging you, if you do qualify for the, for the suspension, the eviction suspension, and you can't be evicted right away, bear in mind that your, your rents are, while you stay in the unit, your rents will continue to accrue, and so you should begin to make plans for what you're gonna do when the moratorium is over. Um, all right, Marty Corman, here's the last one. Um, where can I get legal and perhaps financial assistance in connection with my eviction problems? Well, my first answer is going to be Houston Volunteer Lawyers at makejusticehappen.org because that's where I work um, and that's my <laughs> organization. But there's a whole host of resources. Maria Mitchell just reviewed several of them. Um, you can find them in the um, the information at catholiccharities.org slash tenants. Um, you can also um, review some of the resources that I'm going to show you right now. Um, Betsy, if you wouldn't mind putting those slides up, I'm going to show you some legal resources that we typically rely on and that Catholic Charities has asked me to review for you. Um, so the first resource is going to be CDC eviction moratorium resources. Texas Law Health is a wonderful website that provides information for individuals representing themselves. They've got instructions and forms. Um, the, the CDC moratorium um, declaration is on that website. Um, and there is just a, I mean, just a wealth of information. It's a really well done site. Um, the next link under that one for NHLP is a CDC moratorium, eviction moratorium fact sheet with really good information, again, about the eviction moratorium. 
And also on that NHLP website, you will find the declarations in English, Spanish, and Vietnamese. And that's what all three of those links are. So on this next page, we've got pro se guide and forms. If you're not using a lawyer and you're going to represent yourself, that is on the Houston Volunteer Lawyer website at makejusticehappen.org slash evictions. Uh, we put together a, a volunteer guide with instructions and we've got lots of forms on there for you to print and, and use for your case. The Self-Guided Eviction Help is a fantastic resource that was put together by Lone Star Legal Aid and that can be done on your phone. And it is a series of questions that you're asked and in the end it tells you, it can prepare legal documents for you for the eviction um, or it can also refer you to get legal advice from a lawyer. So I encourage everyone to check that one out, the Self-Guided Eviction Help, because it's a really new and innovative, fantastic resource. Um, Texas Law Help, there's an entire section on COVID evictions during COVID-19. And in addition to that, there's a lot of information on just general COVID-19 issues. Um, these links down here under sample rent repayment agreement and sample early lease termination, we prepared those at Houston Volunteer Lawyers for um, individuals that are representing themselves. If you want to enter into an agreement with your landlord to pay, pay off the, the rent that's owed, we suggest it, it, we highly suggest that it should be in writing and signed by both parties. And we've given you two different types of agreement which agreements that you can use or you can adjust to fit your circumstances. So those are some, those are some really, really great uh, resources for you. Um, we really want to encourage you to, to take advantage of these. Be confident. Uh, we, we understand that this, uh, these are very, very tough times for so many of you. But take advantage of these resources and the great people at these organizations like the Texas Volunteer Lawyers, uh, who are just a great organization of selfless people who really want to help you. And so take advantage of that. Take advantage of these websites. Go to them. Learn what you can. And that'll make you more confident in knowing how to exercise your rights. So uh, with that, um, uh, we... Uh, I'm going to turn it over to Sister Maureen, and it's been a pleasure uh, for us to uh, talk to you, for Marty Carmen and I to talk to you, and we wish you the very best of luck. Thank you Sister. very much. Larry and Mary Carmen and Maria, thank you so very much for not only the time that you spent preparing this, because clearly you spent lots of time, but also the information that you've given us. Um, you know, as you said, these are, are trying times, and um, for people like yourselves to take your time and energy to put together a program like this, we are most grateful. We just have a couple of other things just to remind people that, number one, this um, webinar is gonna be presented again in Spanish language on Thursday, September 24th. And that information will be again on the Catholic Charities website. All of the information that you heard this evening is going, all of the sites and all of the uh, websites are gonna be listed on the Catholic Charities website at catholiccharities.org slash tenants. Also, a recording of this evening's presentation is going to be available on the Catholic Charities website tomorrow. It's going to take a little bit of dusting up to get it ready for tomorrow. But again, um, if you know somebody who wanted to attend and couldn't, encourage them to go to the Catholic Charities website. It's all there and it will all be there tomorrow. So again, thank you so much to, to the people who willingly presented um, their information. And thanks to all of you who took the time to come and, and attend this, this Zoom webinar. So without further ado, Cynthia, I think you're gonna wrap it up for us. Um, and again, thank you all so very much. Can you hear me? Yeah. Um, well, I just wanna close with a scripture. It's from, I love the Psalms. Um, and it says this, that God is our refuge and our strength and ever present help in times of trouble. Therefore, we will not fear. There's just so much going on right now with COVID and the economy and jobs. Uh, so my prayer for you and for all of us is that we can uh, hang together to stay strong as a community, 
and that we can help one another. So let's close in prayer. Father, we thank you for this time together. I ask your blessing upon each person who took the time to participate. For those who are challenged in paying rent, uh, please find the resources to give them uh, not only relief from the rent, but also the legal help needed uh, to remain housed. For all of those seeking to help, provide us with the wisdom and the resources to help our community. And for all those who have become ill from COVID and have lost loved ones, we pray for them as they cope with grief and illness. Father, we lift up these uh, difficult times to you, knowing that you are the God of hope, you're the God of peace, and you're the God of um, healing. So thank you, God, for all of the graces and blessings you provide to us. In Thanksgiving, we pray for everyone who participated tonight, and we ask, again, your blessing on all those who participated. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. Good night, everyone. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night.